Now today's session is based on a report that we've produced called Banishing Bias and this explores professional scepticism through the lens of cognitive bias, the world of psychology. And today we're exploring actually how cognitive bias can inform not just the auditor but also the standard setters, the preparers and the public who are using the reports in understanding how we can improve professional scepticism in audit but also improve audit quality more generally. What we wanted to understand was why it is that auditors are still seem to be finding it a problem uh, 10 years after the global financial crisis and auditors face three constraints. Firstly there's the issue of information asymmetry. The client has all the information and the auditor has to get it from them. Secondly, the auditor has responsibility for the entire audit but their team is spread all around the world and that creates some challenges of managing a diverse team. And thirdly, the auditor faces a ticking clock where they have to get all their audit done within a reasonable amount of time. Making decisions under this kind of pressure creates cognitive bias. So our report is about how auditors can manage this cognitive bias, turn it to their favour. At the moment, much more that we don't know about professional scepticism than that we actually do know about professional scepticism. One very important thing that we do know is that professional scepticism is not just about people being different. Yes, some people are inherently more professional skeptic than others, but it's basically about the interaction between differences between people and environmental conditions. So things like time pressure and the client environment. And we know, for example, from research that people will behave more professional skeptic if the partner on an engagement is stressing the importance of professional skepticism. We have to ask the important questions. Are we sure about what we think or what we are sure? Have we thought hard enough? Have, as an audit team, we asked the best questions? But also, I expect to hear that from others as well, it's not just about auditors, it's also their environment, whether we're talking about management or audit committees or users. Everybody can play a role in asking the best questions and challenging each other. Uh, so auditors should expect uh, greater scrutiny uh, from audit committees on the uh, regular audit execution, uh, apart from uh, uh, large transactions, uh, from uh, significant audit matters. I'm not saying these are no longer important, but they are no longer sufficient in the required communications. And uh, audit committees will pay a lot more attention uh, to the audit execution process. This is not a magic bullet, obviously, but it's part of the enhanced dialogue that should happen as part of the uh, audit performance review under the EU audit reform. And auditors should be proactive in demonstrating how they apply professional skepticism. We put great emphasis from the preparer side on that in, in order to ensure that, that the auditor does a good work, have a challenging mindset, pose all the right questions. But it's also important for us to underline that when you move to business, you still need to retain some sort of critical mindset. Whether you call it professional skepticism or something else, it's within the DNA of an auditor and we think it's so important to retain that. Let's ensure that we have a good professional skepticism, critical mindset, that we take the step back and look, does this make sense? So on the one hand, we have the regulator who is issuing constantly new guidance and regulation. And on the other hand, we do have the audited company, which does not always seem to see what actually is the benefit of all that regulation for them. We have uh, quite a challenge to maintain our professional skepticism and to match the expectations from both parties. But we are aware of it and we are working it on it on a daily basis. So we will get there and we will manage it.